What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Thursday, May 23rd, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, Texas oil regulator flags endangered species designation. Next up, EIA warns severe hurricane season could disrupt U.S. oil and gas. Next up, many countries pledge to reach net zero by 2050, but few plan for it. Interesting. Next up, electricity information on peak demand for power plants. Stu will then toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets today and talk a little bit about what happened with the EIA crude oil petroleum reserves. After that, it's a pretty small, uh, light day for oil news, so we will let you guys get out of here and start your day. As always, I'm Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Where do you want to begin? Hey, let's start with their uh, lizards here. Texas oil regulator flags endangered species designation. I, I got to hand it to this. This is a, a kind of a funny one. Uh, only in Texas. You got to love it. Uh, Wayne Christensen uh, actually came out and says, th this is a quote, the new EPA ruling on this stupid lizard. Excuse me, did I say stupid? I didn't mean to insult any lizards that are possibly listening out there. This doesn't have a thing to do with saving lizards. It's about shutting down U.S. oil and gas production to win political brownie points, which will only increase inflation and jeopardize billions of lives globally, said our railroad commissioner, Christian uh, Wayne Christian, said in the statement. I'm going to hand it to him. He's dead on right. Go, Wayne. I like it. Yeah, I mean... I'm not the biggest Wayne Christensen fan for a bunch of different reasons, but I think what he's what he's but doing is actually calling even better, out Michael. this. This What's one's up? even better. It doesn't matter if it's a lizard, a chicken, a whale, or a unicorn. Radical environmentalists won't be satisfied until we get our all of our energy from firewood and are living in a cave again. I'm sorry. That was the first thing I've really heard from him that I liked. <laughs> yeah, two things. Find mice, find cheese once in a while. And if they're going after whales, we know I'm all for it. Um, you know, the, I mean, he is right about this. Again, I'm not, you know, just because of just because my feelings about Wayne Christensen aren't the best. What he is calling out is something that's great is that this, you know, this United States Fish and Wildlife um, announcement that this dune sagebrush lizard is going to be um, classified as an endangered species under the Endangered Species Act is is clearly a, a political you know a political framework attempting to shut down majority of oil gas development here in the state oh it's unbelievable and and uh, uh our good buddy out there uh mike uh in california was sitting there and his video went nuts when we interviewed him about how much extra work he had to do to go out and look and look under some sagebrush out in california and go mr lizard hello yep we love it's ourselves some good Mike Umbro. Yeah, Mike Umbro. There's a thousand of these little things out there. Yep, absolutely. All right, All right what's next? Let's go to the EIA. Warns severe hurricane season could disrupt disrupt U.S. oil and gas. Here's where I think it's kind of funny. Quote out of the article. Recent hurricanes have had a much smaller impact on total U.S. natural gas supply because natural gas production in the uh, GOM has been declining for year. Gulf of Mexico, GOM. For years, the EIA noted in 2005, hurricanes Katrina and Rita caused major natural gas disruptions. However, gas production from the Gulf of Mexico territories only accounts for under 2% of the total. Wow, that has changed a ton. Well, yeah, no one's going to go drill for gas out in offshore. I mean, that's just dumb. You're going to spend $150 million and try to get gas. I mean, even though we'll cover gas prices here, they've spiked recently. But no, everyone's after that, uh, the black gold. But yeah, um, obviously with you know a, a large increase, if we're about to see that of hurricanes, that is going to disrupt oil and gas uh, supply, which is going to impact oil and gas prices. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this fits in there. Oh, it is. And, um, you know, it's amazing. They can predict the weather, but they can't predict who's going to win on an election. Just kidding. Okay. 
did I just say that? Many that was good. <laughs> we're going to the next. We're going to the next story here. As we have to for our podcast listeners, Michael is hitting his head on the desk laughing. So I think it was a funny joke, but I'm not sure. Many countries. This is the next story. Many countries pledge to reach net zero by 2050. Few plan on it. Wow. Most net zero plans lack estimates for how much residual emissions will need to be captured or removed from the atmosphere. I'm going to go one step further. Nobody knows how much it's going to cost because yep. they really don't know. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, the again, new study. Every, it's it's easy to say something. It's much harder to actually do. You know, we talk exactly. about it. it's easy to make it. You know, I was I was on a you know, a, a call today and we were talking about software, uh, you know, vendor selection. And one of the big things I said was, it's not about the selection. It's about the implementation. You can talk about selecting whatever vendors you want, but then when you have to get down, like we do in our day jobs and actually implement these things, it becomes a whole new ballgame. And I think we spend a lot of time doing lip service to selection and not enough time thinking about what does this mean from an actual, actual implementation standpoint. Same thing with net zero. It's easy to say, let's go net zero. The question is, how do you actually get there using the technology that we have available right now? It's tough. Exactly. 195 uh, countries signed the Paris Agreement. Only 72 submitted voluntary long-term strategies uh, mm -hmm. to achieve the low-carbon low economy by 2050. And of those, 26 include an estimate of future residual emissions uh it's just too expensive there's other articles that are running around out there about the the trillions needed to get to net zero yep. net zero ain't gonna happen you heard it here first let's go to yeah, the next hey, i'm all for net zero if it, if it means killing more whales that's all i'll say the algorithms don't like that what's next no i don't like that i like me some whales all right. Uh, electricity information on peak demand power plants. This is a pretty much an eye opener on this one. There are some facts in here. Natural gas uh, fuels 999 of the peakers in the U.S. Yes, for the podcast listeners, I said peakers. There's a thousand peakers in the U.S. Not like Biden's pants. When we have other power plants, did I say Biden's plants or power plants? I'm sorry. Like other power plants, peakers emit several pollutants like dioxide and whether they're sitting on standby. There's a lot of peak demand and natural gas power plants are wonderful for peak demand. Yeah, it's it, it comes back to what, how do we maximize you know, demand on a daily basis. Have you ever seen a, a, a power demand chart on a daily basis? It looks like a sine wave. If you don't know what a sine wave is, Google it. Um, because what you'll find is that it's, you know, it, it peaks during night, peaks during the morning, levels out or, or drops right. during the day because everybody's at work. Thank goodness. A sine wave that I'm giving Biden when he's driving by is got one, one digit in it. One finger. <laughs> That's that's funny. Again, what you know, I, I love this chart here. If we don't mind throwing up this this chart here, it's the one right below the uh, um, uh, United States. It's his example of average annual uh, hour capacity factors by plant right. type. You intermediate, see base load, peaker intermediate and base load. peaker. Yep. You need the base the that base load energy. Why do we have? Why is it flat up near the top? Because you Nuclear. always have to make sure that at the peak, whatever that peak demand is during the day, you can match it. And natural gas and coal are the two things that can require that right now. That's exactly right. And then the intermediate and a poor old balancing authorities uh, in California and with the heavier solar states are just driving themselves nuts. And the balancing authorities are truly like air traffic controllers that are needing therapy. So maybe we need to have some of the Texas legislature offer therapy from the petting lizard zoo. We could open the petting lizard zoo. That's That would solve our first article's problem. It would. It would. All right.
Look hey, at well, us just solving problems here on this podcast. I love it. It's off to you, dude. All right. Well, before we dive into oil prices, guys, we'll go ahead and pay the bills around here. As always, thank you for checking out energynewsbeat.com. All the news and analysis you just heard is brought to you by that website. Um, you can hit the description below for all the links to the timestamps, uh, links to the articles, and ability to go ahead and grab anything um, you want. Again, the Stu and the team do a great job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. That's www.energynewsbeat.com. Overall markets today, I mean, we got Indivia earnings. As you can see behind me here, they beat earnings per share um, by a little bit. Didn't do much, though, for the overall markets. S&P 500 um, still down a quarter of a percentage point. NASDAQ fairly flat, has recovered a little bit from that beat on Indivia earnings. We did see the two-year yield up about one percentage point. Uh, Ten-year yields only up a quarter of a percentage point, so good to see the two-year yields rising faster than $10 index, up about a uh, you know, point three, uh, three tenths of a percentage point. Um, Bitcoin down about a percentage point below 70,000. Again, 69,469 uh, as we record this here. Oil drops about 1.5 percentage points off some bearish crude oil inventory builds. We'll cover that in a second. 73. 33 as we stand here um, in the afternoon. Brent oil drops about a half a percentage point, 81.86. Natural gas up five percentage points, $2.80, $3 natural gas. Here we come. You know, on the oil side, you know, the EIA did confirm a small crude oil inventory build and gasoline draw, which is is not going to do well for, for, for overall prices. Um, we did see a uh, an increase of about 1.8 million barrels week over week, ending with May on on May 17th. Um, as you we note yesterday, the API estimated about a 2.4 million barrel build, so not quite as 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 bearish as the API projected, but nonetheless a build. You know, we did it did come out today um, that the Biden administration will be releasing about 1 million barrels from the gasoline inventories upcoming year. Um, I mean, we, we, you, you know, I, they're, I they're not releasing it. it. They're destroying it. Yeah, well, you're right. They're yeah, destroying it. It doesn't take a political scientist to figure out why he's doing that. So it's, it's, you know, that will be interesting to watch as we come up here. We did see, um, um, you know, those, uh, uh, production of, of of gasoline inventories, uh, per, or production of natural or oil was about 10 million barrels per day. Um, this, this is on the back-to-back -back draws for gasoline stocks, uh, distillate stocks rose by about 400,000 barrels. Um, and, um, I think that that's really it on the crude oil front. Uh, you know, really why prices are falling is, is, you know, you know, it, again, interest as, as interest rates cuts become less and less likely, we, that is only going to hurt forecasted demand. If only because that's where a lot of the growth comes from is when the economy is booming. Now, on the natural gas side, things are going to get hot, folks, and that's really what's what's happening here. Strong, strong heating demand or cooling demand is upcoming for this U.S. Memorial Day weekend, which is a boon to natural gas prices. Um, obviously, regional pricing isn't great. We're still seeing some problems out in Waha. And down in the Permian, but overall, that natural gas spot price up at two dollars and eighty cents. Very interesting. I mean, yesterday we saw Chesapeake lay off a bunch of people. If they had maybe just waited uh, two weeks, maybe they'd actually see uh, some increases. But this is themselves right sizing themselves for that uh, southwestern merger. Obviously, you know when you hear about quote unquote synergies, just know what that happens. So it's really about the only things I'm seeing today, Stu. Kind of quiet on the on the oil and gas markets. Um, please check out uh, the interview. Um, episode seven with uh, um, Bennett Williams on the Deal Spotlight podcast. You can see that in the same feed. We cover the Chevron Hex Exxon debacle that is the Guyana and Stabroic block. So super interesting there. Really appreciate Bennett for coming on. And, uh, you know, we're getting episode eight lined up, guys. So they, they take a little bit too. I got to do a lot of research behind the scenes. Got to find somebody who's an expert on that deal. And then, and then, you know, we like to make sure they're cut up well. So super interesting, guys. We'll go ahead um, and, and get out of here. But what should people be worried about, Stu? This is our last uh, show for the week. You'll hear, uh, you know, listen to episode seven of the Deal Spotlight, you know, tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, you hear the weekly recap. What should people be worried about going into the weekend? Uh, just buckle up. And uh, I'm looking forward to visiting with Ted Cruz next week. Uh, you know, share that out there. Say hi Absolutely. to him. Ask him some questions. That'll be fun. 
yeah, you'll get kind of two minutes to, to give a little soliloquy. So hopefully we talk about legislation through regulation. We'll have to work on a little speech that you can give, um, figure out what topic you really want to bring up. It's going to be super fascinating um, down there at the uh, American, uh, was it uh, Americans, Americans for Prosperity? For prosperity. Yes, yep. with Genevieve, and uh, it's going to be a great time. We love ourselves from Genevieve Collins and everybody there at the uh, Americans for Prosperity. So, well, we appreciate you guys hanging with us this week. We're going to let you get out of here. Hopefully your weekend. I know it's Memorial Day weekend, so maybe you're off Friday. If you are off Friday and Monday, great. We will be back, though, on Monday, no doubt. With that, guys, have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday.